Hello again, and today we are going to take apart and clean this uh, Sega Genesis controller. I have been playing a game called Booger Man lately, and I feel that these contacts are dirty or something. Otherwise, it's the emulation on the Retron 5 that's causing me to not be able to jump when I press the jump button and such. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. Looks like there's five uh, Phillips head screws. So I've never taken one of these apart before, but I can tell you that that screw is very rusted. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but that's not a good sign for what's going on inside if there's already rust on the screws. So hopefully it's not too bad in there, but if it is, we will see if we can address it. So there's two. At least they're not security bits like on Nintendo's crap. You know, Tri-wings tri and other security bits. They're kind of bullshit. So anyways, I'm almost done taking the screws out. And every single one of them has been pretty rusted except for this one. Oh, it's rusted too. Never mind. All right, so. Okay. Pretty straightforward. The back comes off like that. Looks like we've got some other. No, there's no screws. What's holding this on? No, oh, nothing. Okay, that's good. So we got the mode button out. And yeah, so there is a little bit of gunk in there. It's not as dirty as I thought it was going to be, but uh, some sort of boogery shit. I bought this at a uh, place called Game World, I believe. And it was way overpriced. And those are pretty gross too. I might actually run these under hot water in the sink. Um, just to get a good clean, but let's go ahead and clean the, uh, PCB with some IPA and see if we can get that gunk gone. Grab a paper towel. So I guess the only side we need to really worry about is this top side. Let's make sure we keep our screws over here. Those over there. We'll probably wash that shit in the sink. This too. Okay. So. Let's just go ahead and start scrubbing around this goober right here. Looks like there was like something spilled on it or something. or I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. You don't want to scrub the... Uh, black parts too much because that's the uh, carbon contact point for the um, <laughs> buttons to, to hit and if you scratch that off then it won't make contact and your button really won't work but we're going to give them a little bit of a light scrubbing just to make sure there's no debris on it. We want to make sure they make good contact. Looks okay. It's pretty dirty as you can see. Let's see if uh, another pass gets as dirty. Yeah, so not an incredibly interesting video. I'd just never taken one of these apart before and so just wanted to get it on film while I was doing it, just in case there was something odd about it, but that's a pretty straightforward uh, disassembly there. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do now is just uh, wash all this stuff off with hot water. As you can uh, kind of see, there's a lot of dirt and gunk in there. I don't know if there's any on the actual uh, little contacts on the back, the black pieces, but 
We'll go ahead and give that a scrub as well. Where's that go? That's the start button, I guess. What is that? Yeah, start. I guess start has its own rubber foot. At least they have a an orientation post, so you can make sure you get them put back on right. So that's good. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to take this up to the sink and uh, scrub it. All right, so anytime you're working with small parts, it's probably a good idea to get a little container so that if your parts fall out, they fall out into the container. So I'm going to just let the water get a warm. Sure, we'll make it a little hotter than that. That's all. We'll put a little bit of soap in there. Just like regular dish soap or hand soap is all we need. And let's put that stuff back in there. Dump out all of the buttons. Looks like the D-pad isn't coming out. Let's see if there's something I can do. Does it come out this way? Well, I don't see a way for that to come out easily, so I'm just going to leave it. Should be fine. And let's uh, scrub the bottom piece first. isn't that important because it's the back and it wasn't that dirty in the first place. Around this D-pad was really dirty though, down underneath it. So I'll try to get under there the best I can. I like to go around the edges. A lot of dirt gets trapped in those creases when it's assembled. And then just around the button areas mostly, um, just to make sure that they slide properly and there's nothing obstructing them. So, And anytime there's these like decorative creases, that's another place where a lot of dirt gets put. So it's good to go around those too. And I try not to do much scrubbing where there's lettering just to kind of preserve that just in case. I mean, I use a soft toothbrush, so hopefully with very minimal damage. I'm gonna rinse. I'm gonna set this aside. and set it aside too. One more little scrub. Okay. All right, so that's the main shell. Let's uh, take one of these rubber doodads, clean that off. And they're a little weird to scrub because they flex around, but if you just take your time, it's not too big of an issue. So and then we'll get the bottom pads, make sure there's no goo on those that we couldn't see because they looked pretty clean, but that doesn't mean that they are. So that seems pretty good. Set that aside, do the same thing with the D-pad one.
and it looks pretty good. Now for the buttons. Let's make sure we still have all of them. Should have. That's the start button. There's the start um, rubber thing, and we've got three gray ones and three black ones. So there's the C button. Get all the dirt out of the actual C. And I'm just going to clean up around it. Okay, so there's C is complete. And this is the B button. Should have got some better close-ups of uh, before and after because I think this is going to look much better because these buttons were pretty disgusting. But they're cleaning up really nice. So, all right. So there's the three A, B, and C buttons. Now we'll do the X, Y, and Zs. They're a little small, but and they can be clean, so just keep trying. button. simple. All right, so now we are going to get all the water out and reassemble it. So for that, since uh, as you can see, there's still water in some of the crevices, I'm going to use uh, some air duster and spray it all out. So let's Much better. Dry off the outside. And it's a little scratched up, but it looks much nicer than it did before. I'd never cleaned it before, so. All right, so this one is gonna have some water under the D pad, probably. Outside. Yeah, it's an old controller. Still doesn't look perfect, but at least it should function better than it was before. So let's go ahead and clean out all the buttons. And uh, clean the mode button separately. I forgot to clean that when I was up there. This one has some like wear on the side of it. That's the A button. I guess that makes sense. Most worn out button, but as you can see, there's kind of like a white edge. My air is almost done. All right, good enough. 
Okay, let's uh, get the top shell and get the uh, rubber things put in. Let's see. Oh, actually, no. We need to put the buttons in first. So this is B. B goes in the middle. Is that C? Yes. C goes on the outer edge. And there's keys on those too, so they line up the proper way and they can only go in their one slot, so that's good. And then A. All right. And X. Oops, goes that way. Y and Z. Okay, and then we'll actually put the mode button where it's supposed to go. Let's see, how does that work? It looks like it goes like, oops. If I can get my fingers to work properly, it kind of just sits there. We'll put the uh, little membrane back in for the buttons. Put the start button back in. Put the little rubber thing on that. And there we go. So everything is where it should be. Let's put this down where it goes because it'll hold everything in. Need to, I think the mode button might have to go on after. All right, so let's uh, get these lined up. There we go. Put the cord in there. I should have probably cleaned the cord too, but a little late now. Okay, so mode button. Okay, you kind of just slip it under there. That seems fine, okay. Let's just double check, make sure everything looks good. X, Y, Z, A, B, C. All right. So now let's get those fucking screws put back in and call it a day. All right. So here's the screws. I'm actually going to Scrub the top of them, get some of that rust off. A little bit of water left on my toothbrush. I'm sure that'll fix the rust. Add some water to it. That's sarcasm, in case you didn't uh, get that. Now let's dry them off a little. All right. So, screwdriver. all the screws back in their holes if I can. Luckily they're all the same size so don't need to keep track of what goes where. Come on, go in. While I'm tightening these in, I like to try to squeeze the case together just so that I can get a good tight uh, seal around the edge, but I don't want to use the screw to tighten it. I want the screw to go in easily. So that's why I like push it as tight as I can on the case and then just screw the uh, screw until it's, you know, finger tight. And then that way, when I let go of the pressure, it kind of tightens against itself so because if you crack these it's a pain to try to repair the little hole that you've damaged so it's better safe than sorry i should probably try to find some replacements for these screws because 10 years from now they're going to be all fucking rusted out okay and then you won't be able to get them out because they'll be all falling apart all right so Yeah, it feels a little better, I guess. I mean, it's hard to tell. I guess uh, you can catch me on my live stream uh, tomorrow, hopefully, and uh, I'll test it out on Boogerman and see if it seems like it's a little bit more responsive. But yeah, there you go. That's how you uh, take apart and clean a uh, Sega Genesis controller, at least the six button model. All right, thanks for watching.